Wondering what life is really like on Canada's wild and crazy West Coast? This podcast is all about the people, the places, and Vancouver Island time. Together, we'll explore this island paradise, a combination of ocean, city, and country living. We'll meet the fabulous locals, such as the Fudge Fairy and the Chicken Lady, who have chosen Victoria and Vancouver Island as their home. And we'll learn what makes this place unique and special to those who live here. And now, your host of Vancouver Island Time, Jane Johnston. Hi, this is Jane Johnston with Vancouver Island Time. I'm here with Elizabeth Milder, and she lives in the Oakland area. We're going to learn about what's exciting about Elizabeth and this area, what she does for a living. She uh, is the queen of expansion, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so stay tuned and uh, it's going to be very a very interesting interview. Oakland's is just north of downtown Victoria. It's just off Hillside. It's a very popular area. It's just increased in value significantly in the last few years. So uh, if you want to stay tuned. And then uh, the second half of the show, we'll talk about Elizabeth and what she does with her work with the Queen of Expansion. She's uh, recently come to my notice as a powerhouse woman. She knows how to take advantage of uh, networking. And we're working together with the Chamber of Commerce as well as eWomen Network. So stay tuned and we'll chat with you soon. Hi, everybody. It's Jane Johnston with Vancouver Island Time. I'm here with Elizabeth Milder. And we are going to be talking about the Oaklands area as well as her business, Queen of expansion so tell me um about the oaklands area where where is it and how did you how did it come to your notice well it's it's interesting actually the house that we're in now um used to be my partner's um family home so it was actually the house that his mother grew up in and so we bought the property from his grandparents and uh did a pretty major renovation put uh put in a suite all that kind of stuff and so that was the original connection. There's a lot of like familial history uh, with the Oaklands area. Uh, the the Ryan Street Hill here being, you know, where the family toboggan down in the winters and all this kind of stuff. And um, But what drew Cole and I to the area, Cole being my partner, is just how vibrant it is. Being, for instance, so close to a school, literally I could throw a rock at Oaklands Elementary and also Fernwood Village. It's, it, it's just really, um, it, it has that very neighborhood vibe. Um, we've got a couple of businesses that we frequent in, in the village where, you know, we're known by name because we, we spend enough time there. Um, and that's something that really appeals to both of us, having, having that connected community feel. Um, in addition, even to the work that the Fernwood NRG does, um, Neighborhood Resource Group, I believe is what the, the, those, um, the acronym stands for, but they do a lot of work in supporting the community, providing uh, everything down to um, child care, uh, assisted child care. There's also a school, just like an innovative school of learning right on the corner. And I noticed uh, right across the street from the school is a little park and they have like intro to baseball. It just seems very, very community oriented. You are on top of the hill, which is nice because you have sort of the long view here. But down at the bottom there is very flat, which is great for families. Anybody wanting to... Um, uh, ride their bikes or whatever to and from the park as a kid that's important I found anyway with my kids because we lived on a hill so what about um, uh, stores and stuff around here where do you where do you go for shopping well it's that's another awesome thing about it being so close to hillside literally I can walk uh, to hillside there's actually a bunch of trails and stuff too that go through uh, that get you over to the mall um, so that's the the biggest thing really for us is heading over to thrifties there but now of course that that mall has expanded there's so much there um but then even quadra you know i mean we're we're in such a perfect location i feel here because there's quadra village that has fairways which we actually shop at a lot there's thrifties and the mall there uh the village now i mean the village has become so vibrant even just in we've owned this property now for about four years in the four years since we moved, they've they've really expanded. Um, there's new 
uh, restaurants even. There's the the new Fernwood Pizza Place. Um, the Parsonage Cafe has recently opened a second location. I don't know if you're familiar with, with Parsonage, but I absolutely love that cafe and I'm thrilled that they've um, opened a second location in, in the village. Um, sorry, and I totally forget what your question was. <laughs> That's okay. Well, I was just, uh, people probably won't know who are not from here. So uh, Fairways is a locally owned grocery store and they have a lot of ethnic foods. They're owned by an Asian family in the area. Uh, and they have maybe five or six stores, I think, from here to, uh, all the way to Souk. And then Thrifty's is another formerly locally island-owned store, which is now being taken over by Sobeys, but it still has kind of that. Uh, yeah, yeah. And so, and they're known for hiring people with disabilities and stuff like that. So both really nice places to shop for different reasons and hillside mall um so i find a bit like it's kind of the tail wagging the dog um in different parts of the city where uh malls are developing like even on the west shore the west shore mall developed and then the west shore developed so uh, so you're talking about all the development going along um tell me about quadra village because that's kind of an unknown quantity it was kind of a rough area. They have a beautiful cafe in there. Uh, what about, um, what else, like, uh, do you have any restaurants you like to eat yet down there? Oh, my all-time favorite is Stage Wine Bar. And that's one of those <laughs> places where I was saying we're known by name. We know we know a couple of the bartenders now because we, we go and, um, you know, it's, it's one of those places too where you can go there for, for dinner. They have phenomenal food, tapa, tapa style. Um, really healthy options as well, gluten-free. Um, so it, it kind of fits the bill for everyone. But the other nice thing too, is it's also very casual. So you can go in, just sit at the bar, shoot the shit with Steven as one of the bartenders, um, have a glass of wine. They have a phenomenal wine selection, which is really important to me. Um, so yeah, it's, it's awesome. And even the Fernwood Inn, I'm, it's amazing. Actually, the Fernwood Inn has phenomenal food phenomenal food um you know it really uh, um fits into the victoria foodie scene yeah so uh our very first interview was with leslie hopkins at the fernwood inn and yeah we saw the bubble guy drinking at the bar (laughs) in the middle of the day (laughs) anyway it is it is an awesome place um what about it like are you involved in your community here um like uh what do you guys do for fun? What do you do for recreation here? Well, um, I'd say within the community, usually in the summertime, there's uh, a couple of families that actually host outdoor, um, like movie, yeah, outdoor movies. Um, so we'll get the, the neighborhood together and they usually just put up like a sheet on the side of, um, uh, there's a couple of houses in particular that, that do this, uh, to, to watch, movies after dark. So that's a lot of fun. Usually, as I mentioned, uh, with the Ryan street Hill here, anytime we get any snow, which has been sparse this year, but, but last year it was, it was really quite funny. Um, all the kids that would come to the Hill and go tobogganing down and Cole and I often, we have a a little kind of rock outcropping in the front of the house. So we'll go out there with hot chocolate and, and that kind of thing and serve the kids, serve the kids. Yeah. Yeah. We've done that. And, and sometimes they'll sit on that rock and, uh, watch everything that's, that's going on. It's the perfect vantage point. So it's like Norman Rockwell in Victoria. That is very (laughs) cool. I love that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, um, what about like working out or running clubs or anything like that? Yeah, there's actually uh, a lot. There's the running store. Now, it used to be called Peninsula, and that's how I've always known it, but I think now it's the running room um, over at Shelburne there. Um, so they 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 host running clubs, and it's funny that you should ask that because that's something that Cole and I actually recently uh, have gotten into. Um, as far as working out, I mean, there's um, the community center, Oh my God, Cedar Hill, the Cedar Hill Rec Center. Yeah, and that, there's a golf course there. So you're within yeah. walking distance to a golf course. Oh, within walking distance, yeah. And often what we do is we'll actually run and then run around the chip trail there. Um, it's two and a half kilometers, by the way. I used to run the Times Columnist 10K clinics there every Sunday morning. So, yeah. Um, yeah, and what else? You can work out there too. You can. And Yeah. Don't they have like racket sports? Is there... 
squash there? You know what? I'm not. I'm not sure because I've never looked into that. But it's it's a fairly large community center, so I wouldn't be surprised. I know they do a bunch of like different craft type um, uh, like courses out of there. So artsy stuff. They've done cooking classes, that kind of thing. Um, and it's it's very vibrant as well. I'm actually a part of Toastmasters, uh, so I go on Thursday early on Thursday mornings. But so there there's a lot that's happening out of there kind of on a regular day-to-day basis too, mm. uh, outside of just going and working out. Um, yeah. What else? Do you, um, do you ever go to the ocean from here? Like, um, you're not far from Uvic and Cadbro Bay. And so one of the yeah. cool things about Victoria is the way it's shaped. It's kind of almost semicircular. So you can head out to the ocean from anywhere. You have a little dog. Where do you take your dog for a walk? Yeah, any anywhere in the area really. The the other uh, small kind of village is Haltane Corners, which is not far from here. It's a couple of blocks. So usually between Fernwood Village and Haltane, uh, there's the coffee shop there called Coffee, which is uh, quite phenomenal. There's a little market and stuff there as well. So it's we're usually walking kind of more in the neighborhood. Um, but we're not a far drive and we'll often take her to like Dallas, um, or even Cedar, Cedar Hill. Um, cause we also have a big dog. You only saw the small one, but, mm-hmm. um, yeah. And really that's, that is actually one of the all time best things about this area is its proximity to so many things, including downtown. So on the one hand, we're close enough to downtown that, you know, often we'll just cab because, of course, parking downtown now is becoming a real. Well, I'm from Toronto originally, so it's so it's, it's not it's it's nothing. Yeah. yeah. Um, actually, we were looking at a house on Mount Stephen yesterday, which is just around the corner from here. Absolutely fabulous house. And anywhere else in the city, it would be gone. Listed at one point one million. Uh, stunning. Uh, lot and beautifully upgraded house uh, character home I've noticed there's a lot of character homes uh, in the area like down Graham and Mount Stephen and um, along Haltane they're sort of less expensive ones the more expensive ones are on top of the hill I noticed that and it looks like there's um, like an old house down the way that looks like to be the original house and it's set back from the road yeah yeah I know exactly what you're talking about yeah and the really cool thing, too, that I should mention just next to our property here, this is actually a Gary Oak uh, Grove. So it's actually protected. Nothing will ever be developed there. And it's just cool having having those here. Most people don't realize actually what a gift it is having those Gary Oaks. We're like the only place in the world where they grow. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's pretty amazing. And <laughs> kind of on a, I mean, I know a lot of people hate the deer here in Victoria, but... Um, we have a couple that hang out in our backyard. Our back r- backyard right now is not developed, so they've found a, a couple of spots to to hang out there, and they constantly eat all my flowers and everything. But but it's cool seeing them, you know, and all the raccoons and everything too. My husband just planted a whole bunch of tulips, uh, which won't come up till next spring. I bought the bulbs and I was planning on planting them in our backyard, and I was going to plant them in a heart, and. Yeah, and he decided he would plant them as a, like, just do it, right? And he planted them all in the front yard. I'm like, oh, they're like salad for (laughs) the deer. They love them. They, yeah. Anyway, we have a lot of Gary Oaks around our property as well. I find uh, we have a big dog too, and she just sits out the window, watches all the deer, and Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it feels like, yeah, I, Gary Oaks are protected, true, so are Arbutus. They are also unique to this area on the West Coast. In the backyard. Sorry. Yeah, they're beautiful. My kids call them the naked lady trees. Well, I'll take a picture so you guys can see what they look like. They're just absolutely stunning. Um, okay, well, I, is there anything else you want to highlight about Oakland's area? Well, I mean, there's really, I can't, I can't say enough about the area. And I guess what will speak most to that is the fact that um, you guys will learn this, but I'm a real estate investor and that's actually Fernwood is the area that we invest most in. We've got, um, 11 units at this point. And so 11 units and four properties, and we only have one other 
property that's actually in Saanich. Um, but we just love the area so much because of the value, obviously, of the properties, um, their, you know, their appreciation even over the last few years, as as it has been all over Victoria. But, but you know, that's been that's been really good. And the rentals, the rental value, um, you know, Fernwood is a very desirable area. Oakland's even more so. Um, so in terms of renting, getting good good tenants, but then also um, you know, uh, getting good, good rent. It's, it's good. Yeah. So we've actually, I've noticed it's only happened in the last 10 years. So when I first did my first market analysis in this area, um, I would say properties have doubled since then in, since, uh, 2006. So for sure. Yeah. Great area, family oriented. Um, one of the first houses I sold in the area was on Victor, which is right around the corner. Beautiful. The mayor, former mayor of Victoria lives on Victor. And um, yeah, very centrally located. All right, so we're going to take a break and we'll be back and we're going to learn all about Elizabeth and what she does with real estate investing and why you need to connect with her. All right, take care. Vancouver Island Time is brought to you by the Briar Hill Group at Remax Camosun, Victoria, where we bring local expertise and global presence to your property. All right, we're back with Elizabeth Milder, and uh, she is known as the Queen of Expansion. And uh, she and I were introduced to one another last year. But uh, tell me more about yourself. Like, why, why, um, why have you started? You started a po- your own podcast. Mm-hmm. So why did you start that? And what's your purpose? What's your passion? Well, my, my passion is definitely real estate and it's, it's funny how the Queens of Expansion, how that whole thing came, came about. I went last year to a kind of entrepreneurial, inspirational conference called Thrive Connect and we were, we were in the same hotel at the same time actually. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's crazy. Um, but yeah, so this was an event that my partner and I went to actually last October And at that event, you know, one of the messages that resonated the most with me, or I guess that I took away really, was this idea of taking action Mm -hmm. and not being overly concerned with perfecting a thing before you just start moving. Just do it. Yeah, just do it. Exactly. So there were a number of conversations that happened that weekend um, that culminated actually in a final conversation that left myself and the woman that I was speaking to crying and it was a, and it was, it was a heart, you know, it was a good, it was a good cry. Um, but we were basically just talking about the struggle that we face in being in real estate, which is of course male dominated. So whether I'm sure you've got stories in building, yeah. yeah, it's, it's just, uh, across the board. And even now being an active real estate investor, going to real estate, events, whether it's just networking events or educational things, whatever, you necessarily end up in a room full of, you know, probably 80 to 85% men. And what this woman was telling me is the struggle that she had faced in getting started in real estate and the struggle that she was currently in. And we connected, connected on that. And I had talked to her about kind of my experience with real estate investing and At the end of that conversation, it just made me realize that women need a platform to talk about these things. So, do you know what's funny? So, I just recently posted something on Facebook about men and women, and I got a bit of a backlash from a guy. And I'm like, you know, as a single white guy, you have no idea, honestly, what it's like. You have no idea. And um, I was saying, I was at a golfing uh, tournament last week, and we were all hitting balls, right? And uh, somebody sent me a derogatory text because I hit the ball well, you know, and I'm a woman. It, basically, it was said, you know, that's not a very feminine way to hit the ball. What? Yeah. And so you just wonder, like, you, as men, I think they they don't even know that they're doing it quite honestly right and it's not i don't think it's meant to be offensive it just is there's a club men are a part of it and women are trying to break into it right mhm absolutely and it can be really intimidating 
that's that's the biggest thing and that was really the context of that conversation was like how you manage that intimidation what she had seen of me because we had various opportunities to speak and you know i'm i'm somewhat of a i guess a loud mouth i i have an easy t easy time talking and 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 sharing and that that was kind of what drew her and what kind of sparked this conversation. So anyways, it, it just, I really kind of realized that there was a need for that. And Queens of Expansion has taken a, a couple of turns. I initially was really worried about talking about my real estate side because I felt one, I didn't want anyone to think that I was trying to sell anything. And to be honest, I have some, um, I guess, confidence issues around that too, because I, I'm not doing this alone and I, I never want to seem like I'm being inauthentic talking about myself as a real estate investor when I haven't achieved this on my own. I have a partner that has been instrumental. Right. Well, and I think, <clears throat> um, first of all, I don't think anyone would think <laughs> it's yeah. so funny how we perceive ourselves. Mm -hmm. I feel the same way. Like, uh, you know, working in real estate i'm always striving 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 but i think it's just because maybe your personality is that you're driven yeah and uh, and i my expectations are necessarily high and and i think that sometimes comes into play and you know we are our own worst critics that's it's totally true and so you're always going to blow any anything out of proportion and and feel that it's worse than really it is so that's something that um, I've been fortunate having been a part of this group with Thrive and Thrive Connect. It's a mastermind that we're a part of. Um, I've had a lot of really good advice and, you know, some kind of informal mentoring with with some people in the group. Legacy Perez being being very instrumental. Um, and he basically just asked me this last uh, meeting that we went to. He said, you know, what what really is it that you're trying to achieve with Queens of Expansion? What is your what is your vision with that? And I said, really, it started because I wanted to educate women and, and empower women to invest in real estate because I, for a long time, was terrified of the prospect. And so I had invested in property with my dad and then again with my partner, but I never felt that it was something that I could do on my own. And knowing what I know now, mm -hmm. I absolutely could have. Well, it's just, it doesn't mean that you didn't do the right thing investing with other people. I think it's important yeah. to be mentored and learn from them. Um, and uh, for me, that's how I got into real estate as well. And I ended up going the other side. So I'm, rather than an investor, um, I'm a realtor, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I thought I would be an investor, but it turns out when you're a realtor, there's lots of disclosure issues and it's actually very difficult. difficult. Yeah, we have to be very careful. So... I probably would have invested more. So you're probably going to end up further ahead than me financially <laughs> because the best thing is to buy and hold, which it sounds like you're doing, right? That is our meat and potatoes, yes. We have done a couple of flips, but in, in the long run, it just does not make sense for you know the risk reward. And that's one of the things that I love so much about real estate, you know, people, I, I get this all the time. People think we're crazy because some of the projects that we take on and the money that we um, put into these properties. But at the end of the day, real estate is the only investment where you can really substantially mitigate the risk. Well, you can also borrow from yourself, yeah, which is unique to any other investment. And there, I think Mark Twain said, "Land don't land doesn't rust." So mm -hmm. that's true. We're on an island. We have limited supply. Totally makes sense. We're in the warmest area of Canada. Canada yeah we have health benefits so there are lots of people who you know come here to live um, mm -hmm. and retire and military we have a very stable economy like to me you're making a, a great decision the, the other thing is if you want to invest you don't have to just invest in Victoria yeah. right so you and I talked about <clears throat> that so there are other markets that you can invest in where you can speculate if you want um, it's just that you have to travel have you considered that we have, and actually part of our path in 2018, we um, are educating ourselves about other markets, including as far as the States. So we'll, we'll kind of, we'll, we'll see where that goes. The, the one thing I will say with that is yes, you have to travel and that's where we've 
put things into motion to give us the opportunity to actually utilize uh, connections that we have to learn about markets so that we can make, you know, really educated uh, decisions when, when we finally make a decision to invest in another community. So, yeah, so <clears throat> I think I've connected you with an investment person who actually does that. I, and the one I went to a seminar of theirs and what they were talking about, you, you have like the falling knife. So the falling knife is when the market's going down and you know, no matter which way you're going to get cut <laughs> if you invest. But uh, what they do is they look to see when the economy's just about to turn around. So they have some factors that they determine. So you can be quite scientific about it, but speaking from the perspective of a, a realtor, I find people come in and they want to know like the big picture and the perspective. And, um, you know, where are we in terms of where we've been in the past 10 years? What's the, what's happening? What do you forecast is happening in the next three years? So are you working with realtors in those other cities or are you working with investment advisors? We're working with, I mean, in, or is it a team? Informally investment advisors, but people that are already active investors. And these are just um, people that we've become friends with through this mastermind that we're a part of that have huge investment companies. Yeah. Yeah. So, and some realtors, apologies. Yeah. Some realtors as well. Yeah. I just find it, it takes a unique person to see the, um, yeah, the big picture mm -hmm. I find. So, um, what are some, um, exciting opportunities that you have for people? So you have, uh, pe people you want to invite to your podcast mm -hmm. and what kind of clientele are you looking for for that? Well, the big thing now that I, you know, uh, when I started Queens of Expansion, I kind of started to touch on this, but I was more focused on entrepreneurs and now I've really decided to get very specific and, and speak to people within real estate. So any, anyone really within that um, kind of arena, so whether it's realtors, investors, you know, architects, I have a female architect that I'm going to be interviewing coming up. So that's really cool. Um, really anyone that, that has any insight to offer in terms of real estate and investing. Yeah. Okay. And, um, what, what are your plans, uh, in, within Victoria? Well, very exciting. We actually have an accepted offer on a property, um, as of a couple of days ago. So this week we'll be going through and doing our due diligence, but fingers crossed all is well there. And so we'll have our next project on the go here. Um, we are also looking at working with, uh, some other investors to, um, develop a property together. So we, you know, our, our company name is expansion properties and that's for a reason. We are definitely in a mode of expansion and our intention for 2018 is to, instead of our normal one project for the year, we're, planning to have two, hopefully three, uh, within 2018 and really, you know, drive, drive the investment piece forward even further. Cool. All right. So oh, how do people get in touch with you? Yeah. So I'm on Facebook under expansion properties, as well as Queens of expansion. Uh, we have an Instagram account as well. You can find information on our real estate investment and development company at expansionproperties.com. Um, find me on Facebook under Elizabeth Milder. Okay. Yeah. All right. So if you're interested in learning more about Elizabeth, she'd be happy to hear from you. Uh, I want to just thank her for introducing us to Oakland mm -hmm. today and teaching us about who she is and what she does. And I'd like to welcome you to the neighborhood. I'm Jane Johnston with the Briar Hill Group at Remax Camosun and host of Vancouver Island Time. We'll chat with you soon. Bye. <laughs> Have you ever asked yourself this question? Why is it so hard to make a buck? <laughs> I know I have. Hi, I'm Sandra Yancey, founder and CEO of eWomen Network. What I have discovered after going from the brink of bankruptcy to running a multi-million dollar award-winning business is this. You can't build a million dollar dream hanging around minimum wage mindsets. My mission is one million women entrepreneurs generating $1 million in annual revenue. So here's what I've done. I've created the mother of all entrepreneur success programs that you can access online on your time. 
It's called Monetize Me Now. It's a seven module online course that is 100% my success formula, covering mindset, mission, management, motivation, marketing, and measure. Come on, take my hand and I'll show you the way to learn to earn flowing revenue for your business. Visit monetizemenow.com for details.